Hi, my name is Howard Durking, and I am a program manager on the ASP.NET team. And what I'm going to talk about today is some optimization techniques that you can use for your HTML5 web applications when you're using ASP.NET 4.5 and Visual Studio 2012. Now, when we talk about optimization, this can mean a whole lot of different things. And so I'll narrow it down just a little bit and say that when we're talking about the ASP.NET web optimization feature, we're really talking about two things. The first thing is something called bundling. And bundling is where you take a whole bunch of scripts or styles or some kind of resource and you combine all of those into a single resource. And the goal there is that your browser has to make fewer HTTP requests in order to get everything that it needs to render a page. So once you've bundled all of, the, all of these things together, the second thing that we're going to talk about is something called minification. And minification is basically applying a bunch of techniques uh, to make those requests smaller. So examples of those techniques would be um, shortening variable names in JavaScript or eliminating white space. Or we can even do some really fancy things like selector collapsing for CSS rules. But th those are the big ideas that we talk about for bundling and minification. And those are really the focal points of web optimization in ASP.NET 4.5. So rather than just have me talk about it, why don't we actually take a look and see what that looks like. And so what I've done here is I've created a very basic MVC4 application. In fact, this is really just the starter templates um, that you would get when you do File New Project. And what you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and just launch it, and then I'm going to turn on the browser tools in Internet Explorer, and we'll start capturing the network traffic. And when we load this page, what you can see is that we have a whole bunch of style sheet and JavaScript files that need to get downloaded to the browser. So in order to enable this with web optimization, we can simply go into the system.web element inside of the web config file and change the debug attribute to false on the compilation element. What we'll do then is go ahead and relaunch the application. We'll go back over here to our network tools and turn capturing back on. And now you can see a couple things. Most notably, we have a whole lot fewer requests that have actually been made to, to render this page. The other thing that you'll notice is that we now have this v equals big long string parameter that's attached to all of our resources. Now, this is what's called a cache busting stamp or a, a version stamp. And what we do here is we take a hash of all of the contents in that bundle and we produce this value. This enables us to then set the cache expiration time to the max possible value. And the reason we can do that is because if anything actually changes inside that bundle, we're going to generate a new hash, which will, from an HTTP perspective, be considered a completely new resource. So rather than dealing with dates for cache expiration, we simply say, cache forever, and if there's a change, then create a new resource. Now that you've seen how it works, let's, I'll talk a little bit about how to configure it and how to use it in your applications. Now, to get started, you'll take a look at uh, the global ASAX file. And again, this is an MVC application, and so you should see a lot of things that are pretty familiar. For example, you'll see area registration, You'll see route configuration. And now you can also see a call to this method called register bundles. And what that does is it calls into a method that is in a class found in your app start folder called, appropriately, bundle config. And what we can see in this bundle config file is a bunch of calls to add either script bundle instances or style bundle instances to a bundle collection, which is passed in from Global ASAX. Um, now, there are basically two key things that we specify here. One is the virtual path that we want the bundle to be available under. And then the second is a whole bunch of resources that we want to include inside the bundle. For actually using the bundle, we can go over here to one of our views, which we're looking at here, this layout CSHTML. Now, there's a key trade-off that you should be aware of between the render and the URL methods. When you use the URL method, 
you get full control over the HTML markup that's being generated. So for example, if you look at this example here for Modernizer, I'm taking advantage of the async keyword that's now available um, for the script element uh, for asynchronously loading JavaScript. Because of that, and because the optimization framework doesn't generate that attribute by default, I only want the framework to give me the URL. I don't want it to render the actual script tag. That's where the URL method becomes pretty valuable. Now, what you give up for using the URL method is the ability to have debug and release support. You get that by using the render method. And what that means is that the framework generates not just the URL, but the entire script or link element. And what that means from a debug and release perspective is that in debug mode, um, by default, we will render individual link or script elements for every item that's included in the bundle. This makes it a lot easier for you to troubleshoot problems with your scripts or styles individually. When you're in release mode then, we combine them all and emit a single link or script element only for the bundle. So that's the basic trade-off between which helper method you should use. Do you want full control of your markup, or do you want debug and release support? And one of the other things that we also support in the framework is the ability to reference CDNs. So a CDN is a content delivery network, and what you can do is specify an alternate CDN path for a bundle as you're setting it up. So let's actually just take a look at that. If we go over here back to our bundle config class, you can see that I've set up a CDN path for jQuery and where it sits on the CDN. Now, one of the other things that I'll need to do is go to bundles and set use CDN equal to true. And then the final thing I need to do in my declaration is in, right here where I've declared jQuery, I'm going to add a second parameter, which is the path to my jQuery CDN. Now, the way that this works is the CDN path will only be used in release mode. So the final thing I'm going to do over here is go back to my web config and make sure that debug is set to false. So we're already in release mode. And I'm going to launch the application and go back over here to start capturing network traffic. And what we can now see is that jQuery was in fact pulled from the CDN uh, into our web application and not from our local directory. The final thing I want to show you is that we've talked a lot about this from the standpoint of MVC, and many times when we've done this, people have asked the question, well, wait, what about web forms or what about web pages? And we do support optimization across all of the different flavors of ASP.NET, and so one of the things I want to show you is what that looks like in web forms. So I've created this, uh, this additional uh, project here. And one of the things that you should note is that this, the way to set up your bundles looks very, very similar. So if I open global ASAX here, you can see that I still have a call to bundle config register bundles. Um, and if I look at bundle config, it actually looks just like the bundle config from my MVC project. There is one difference that I do want to point out, and that is for CSS bundles. Now, the reason behind this is because in web forms, you actually have two different views. You have your runtime view, which is similar you know, with MVC and web forms and all these others, but you also have a design time view. And one of the things we ran into, because bundling and minification is generally a runtime feature, um, it didn't work very well by default in the web forms designer. And so what we've actually done in order to support CSS bundles in the designer and at runtime is we've added another file here called bundle.config. And this is basically just an XML representation of the same stuff that we were creating using code. And what this actually, where this links in, is in your actual web form. So if we go over here to our master page, what the other thing that you can see is that we also have a server control that is a bundle reference. And this accomplishes, again, the same kind of thing but tailored to web forms in a way that will work in both the designer and at runtime. So this has been a really quick overview of the web optimization features in ASP.NET 4.5 and Visual Studio 2012. There's going to be a lot more content coming out over the next few months, but in the meantime, check it out, try it out, and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.